Tai. I'm the owner and founder of Intentionally Blank. I also am the designer and creative director. We are a Los Angeles-based brand with two brick-and-mortar stores, a hundred stockists uh, here domestically, and then, uh, of course, our online direct-to-consumer channel. I've been working in footwear for many, many years for other brands, so I actually started Intentionally Blank after I was fired from my last job. So I was let go from there, and I just had been using that time and experience working for other people with their money, building their brands, learning all the facets, and then I just decided that I had enough contacts to go out on my own and launch, and launch the brand. Everything about Intentionally Blank is intentional, so that's the exact concept behind it. So there's a price point that I go after, a look that I go after where I just felt there were gaps in the market. So there's a lot of vintage inspiration, made very modern, everything's very walkable, I use very like low heels and very like easy shapes. I sell a lot of shoes to New York City, San Francisco, Chicago, Portland, Seattle, it's like a lot of places that are walking. So the basis of the brand is just, the price point is a little bit higher than like a mid-tier price points like a Dolce Vita, Sam Metalman, Jeffrey Campbell, but where I do the best is when I'm the entry price point with stores that carry higher brands, so maybe like a Rachel Comey, uh, LOQ, those kind of brands, like Hope Go. So I really want to bridge the gap between mid-tier and people who are buying into like indie and emerging designer. So there's just this gap where there's no one in this price point and there's no one kind of going after that younger client who still wants the brands, giving it to them at a price that they can afford it, and then also being the entry price at these higher, more curated stores where they're still appreciating you know, value, comfort, fit, and then a point of view. When we launched the brand, I went straight into retail, um, straight into wholesale, so right directly right into channels with other stores. And as a natural first step of the brand, and developing the brand, we launched an e-com platform right away. Um, it's been upticking ever since the launch, so we are six years old. So we started on Squarespace, we now exist on Shopify, um, and we've just continued to grow the brand. I use the, the stores and the direct-to-consumer portal as a consistent like testing channel where I put up exclusives, I test uh, one-off colors, I do exclusive product before I roll it out to retailers or to keep the selection exclusive. Moving into retail, obviously I know retail is not like something people are dying to go into in 2020. I am obsessed with retail. I love shopping. I do not shop online. I do not shop on Amazon. I don't buy things on Amazon. I love going into stores. I think shoes are very specific, um, but I also love well curated stores. I like the opportunity to see what people are curating. So I wanted to create these micro stores that just basically have my brand. We carry a few third-party brands in the stores, apothecary, candles, accessories, but the stores are very focused on, on shoes. As far as the wholesale aspect goes, we show at a lot of different platforms. Um, I show with Brand Assembly, and I have been showing with them continually for the last maybe four years. Um, we show at the New York show, we show at the LA show, and then I also show and partner with them for Reassembled, which is their more boutique-y show. Um, and I just finished showing with them in Paris. For me, this show, obviously it's not a shoe show. We do do some footwear-specific shows but this is really a lifestyle show. Um, I'm here because I like the other brands that are here. They curate something really special, really elevated, but also I like the customer service of the show. Um, I really gravitate towards the owner, Hillary. I really think like having a female-owned platform really helps. You can see it in the organization and the team that she's built. I just think it's something I want to be a part of and I really respect what they're doing. There's no one else that's offering complete back office up to trade show format and it's just very on the forefront of what I think is next and what's important. It's like not easy to own a brand right now, it's not easy to own stores right now. So any advantage I think people can get is helpful. We are a tiny team. I have a very, very small team. They would probably say that I am a monster. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but we have a very tiny team. We are um, three full-time people in the office. And then, of course, the retail team. We have associates at the store. And some of them overlap between the office and the store. So we wear a lot of hats. Um, we do a lot, of course, keeping the stores going and stocked and then 
shipping, packaging, receiving, it just is like never ending. There's always um, something that's going wrong. So it's good, we just opened our newest store in Hudson, New York, so it will be open this month. And um, so we have a store on both coasts in totally different environments, and I think it's gonna be a really good next step for us. I find that if I just really stick true to the basic belief of what I have is that no trend is trend, and that I'm creating shoes as accessories, that I can carve out like a clientele almost anywhere. I really believe that women are more empowered now to like discard any trend. If you want to be goth, if you want to be boho, if you want to have an athleisure, you can, and that can change from day to day, and that requires like an evolving style, personal style, and a deeper understanding of your personal style based on mobility, we work more, travel more, and so I like being a part of that in the two dynamics of both coasts and like answering that kind of question with styling and like func high functionality. I like doing the sales as myself, so I try to create the same vibe when you come to us as a wholesaler. It's very personable. I like people to know that we're very indie, that we're small. I am not someone who has a giant trade show booth or has these giant build outs. We are a small indie brand and that's what I want these stores to invest in. And that's what I understand of these stores as well. That it's not easy to have a store that there's a lot of hustle and a lot of grind that goes into it. Um, our stores are very minimal and easy. A lot of shoes, so if you're a shoe, if you have a shoe problem, it's like worth a stop. Um, in Los Angeles, our store is located next door to Squirrel, which is like a super famous breakfast and lunch place. So you can kind of knock out all of your vices in one little block. Um, and then our new store in Hudson, New York is on like the main and only shopping street there. So we're surrounded by really great retailers on Warren Street, which is, um, you know, the train from the city lets you off right in downtown. And it's just, it's great. So. We just try to take the influences, weather, lifestyle from each location and kind of incorporate that into the store. I would say do it first with someone else's money. If you want to start your own brand and you have an idea, I would say get in with someone who gives you the freedom to really like get your feet wet. And people don't realize like how much it costs to ship a box to China, how much it costs to get a set of samples done. Like I would really recommend putting your passion to work for someone that you respect and then taking all of your contacts and hightailing it out of there and starting your own brand.